quadratic equation with real coefficients can have two real distinct roots when the discriminant is positive, so the graph crosses the x-axis twice. Or another possibility is one real repeated root where the graph touches the x-axis and the discriminant is zero. The third case is when the discriminant is negative, that is the roots consist of um, one pair of conjugate roots. Okay, so let's do an example. Let's find the sum and product of a simple quadratic equation. z squared plus 4z plus 13 equals zero. Once again, we'll open up a calculator page and I'll just type in the quadratic, which is z squared, z up arrow two, plus four times z, we don't need the z times, plus 13 equals zero. Now, we're going to do this sort of incorrectly now because if I go menu, algebra, solve, and I try to solve that equation for z, it tells me false. The reason being is that we're in complex mode. If we wanted to do this properly, we have to use what's called the C solve command. Uh, algebra, complex, complex solve, complex solve number one. So this is just C solve. So when I go C solve now for Z comma Z, we'll get the two roots occurring as complex conjugate pairs minus two plus three i, or minus two minus three i. Now, there's also another way we can do this, and this is a bit of list manipulation here. If you're not sort of familiar with lists, let me just quickly explain what we mean by lists. So, we can type things into a list. So, for example, lists are enclosed in curly brackets. So, if I type in two, say, six comma one, and move out of there, and let me store that using control store to say um, XL, which is the X list. So store and define are basically the same functionality. Now the variable XL1 is just the first element in the list, which is two. XL2 is the second element in the list, which is three, and XL3 3 is the third element in the list, which is 1. If I try to access an element in the list which is outside the range 1, 2, 3, then we'll get an error that that value doesn't exist. Now, the nice thing about elements in a list is that we can, if we define, say, another function, f of x equal to, say, x squared, then I can just go f of xl and that is going to square every element in the list. So for example, the first element was 2, 6, 1. Because I've squared every element in the list, it's now 4, 36, 1. Okay, very nice little ideas, which we'll use in a, in a moment. Okay, but um, another little idea that we can use is for that quadratic, we can go menu, algebra, complex, complex zeros. Now this is a zeros command. C zeros mean we're going to solve the equation and put the elements necessarily into a list. So when I do this, I don't say it's equal to zero. I just say C zeros of the function because it knows it's equal to zeros. So for example, now it's going to give me the two complex conjugate elements in a list. So if I press up arrow again, and now, for example, if I want to store those elements, so control store, or effectively define those two elements to say ZL, then if I just type in the word sum ZL, then I've got the sum of the two elements in the list, which is obviously minus four. Now, if I was to work out the product of ZL1, times ZL2, which is the product of the roots, then sure enough, we get 13. Now, what was my quadratic? It was Z squared plus 4Z plus 13. This is no fluke. This happens every time. So 
for a quadratic equation having real coefficients, having roots alpha and beta, the equation is always z squared minus the sum of the roots times z plus the product of the roots equals zero.